All right, I've had some requests to show how I set up my jobs. Um, so right now I'm doing, it's a clock, and it's going to have a three-dimensional image on one side and the actual clock numbers on the other, but it's live edge. I don't know if you can see that. So it's real hard to square it up. Well, it's not hard, but it's it's... A lot of times what I'll do is I'll just square the edge of the material up with the edges of the table and then that gives me a straight line. Watch. So I put my material down and if you see the groove in this table, I just would square it up and clamp it down. But with this particular project being live edges, you can kind of see the waviness of it. It'll be close, but when you're dealing with thousands of an inch, close isn't good enough. And being that I'm going to flip this over that way, that way, and do a pocket tool pass on the back for the movement of the clock, it needs to be pretty much perfect. So what I've done is I've this pencil line on here actually yeah I'm sorry I did that but then I realized I put the pencil line on crooked so I just marked five-eighths of an inch from each side and what that is is this whole board is basically 11 and a quarter inches wide and I need 10 inches for the material space for what I set up for my uh, material dimensions so I just basically split the difference and called it a 5 eighths of an inch. I minus 5 eighths of an inch off the top, and then I, you know, that'll give me a straight line. So I marked it on the side. So now what I'm doing is I will just, if you've got enough light in here, I don't know if you can see this, I'm going to line this line up with the edge of that material, just like that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, and I'm going to clamp it down. And then it'll be time to set the home position. I have a straight edge on this piece of plywood, so I just line it up with the channel. Okay. Then I go ahead and just square up my oops my pencil line to the edge there. Oh. This is redwood that I milled myself. Watch. I forgot to show you something. Now, I don't know if you can see that. It's cupped. This is, um, I milled this piece of redwood myself, this slab. And if you can tell, touching, touching, not touching. So what I do is I'll just clamp it right in the middle to push this down and I will do what is the most detailed work on this side, okay? Um, see, and this is why, because if you're setting it to your material surface here, which is where my home position is going to be, right above this line, this is lower than this. So what happens is, is I have my plunge depth to go, you know, 0.8 four or whatever, 0.85 for this eighth of an inch end mill. So it's gonna start here from this home position and it's gonna go up and it's gonna go over and then it's gonna go down back to the home position surface and then down four tenths. And then it's gonna start going. If this is already three tenths of an inch higher than this, now instead of milling 0.4, I'm milling 0.7. So if I have to mill it like this, then what I do is I will Set my home position uh, 
about four tenths of an inch higher. It, whatever my plunge depth is set at for the tool I'm using, I will set it that much higher than the home position, than the top of the surface material. Then I will let the first pass run by and it will skim off all the high stuff so that everything will be that height. Then I'll go back to my home position. I will reset it to the material surface and then I will go again. And then that way when you get to the middle, you don't have all the extra wear and tear from all the extra thickness of uh, material thickness. I hope I'm explaining that right, but I think you can catch the gist. So that's how I deal with cupped wood uh, when I'm setting my home position. Okay, so I line this up. I line this line up with the edge of that board. I tighten this down because the numbers from my clock are going to be right around here. I don't want to have any interference with my hold down, so I went ahead and went off of center a little bit because I do believe I'm going to be about one inch from the end with my, I guess it's going to be 12, with my number three. So let's go tighten up the other side. Okay, I straighten up the edge of the board with that same channel that I'm in, and then the line on the edge of the material, and screw it down. Give it a pull. Make sure it's not going to shift. Oops. Now, what I do to check is I will. There, you know what? Okay, so now what I'm going to do, if I'm ever in doubt that I'm on a perfectly straight line, I will move this. Okay, so I am on that line. Now I'm going to move it 16 inches. Oh, actually, I'll set my home position. And I'm going to go up just a touch. And I'm going to go away. 16 inches. Now it tells you how far I've traveled. As I set my home position, so I started by moving up, not quite a tenth, you know, uh, eighth of it, or uh, like a half of a tenth, I don't know, whatever you call it, five hundredths, and then I moved down sixteen inches. So let's show you what it looks like on the other end. If you have your material lined up right, you should be on your mark at the end of the end of the table. Now, as you can see, I am just a little tiny bit off. Now, does that mean that my material is not square? Or does that just mean my mark is just a little bit off? Maybe because of the thickness of the pencil lead or the way I had the straight edge on there when I made the line. Um, because I know I have more than enough room, I'm going to leave it. But if you knew you were working with a 100% perfectly square piece, I'm trying to show you. I hope you can see this. Let's see if I can get closer. 
I was saying, if you knew you were working with a 100% square piece, then I would know right here that I'm off. And if my piece of material was exactly the dimensions I put into my machine when I made the design, in this case 16 on the Y, 10 on the X, then I would know that once I get to this side, I'm going to be a 16th of an inch or so off on everything. But because I think it's just, I suspect that it's just the way I drew the line, I'm going to go ahead and leave it. And I think we're going to be just fine. Okay, so it's time for a tool change. So what you do is you lift your um, your spindle up, change your tool, then you just simply lower it back down to the material surface. then zero it out and now you have done a tool change and reset your home position and now you're ready to go let's fire this sucker up <clears throat> let the spindle get up to speed And now we are off and running. And that's all there is to a tool change, uh, resetting your home position, and rocking and rolling. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thumb it up if you did. Hit that subscribe button, please. If you have any questions or comments, um, throw them in the box down there and I'll get to you if I can which I generally make a point to get to everybody who comments sometimes it takes me a little while because I do work and I got stuff going on but I will respond so uh, thanks for watching and have a great day for the next video I'm out <laughs>